quite often see the question come up on, you know, Facebook groups and things like that, music orientated, especially younger people um, needing to know how they get started making music and particularly with sorting out their own studio kit. So I thought it'd be nice just to do a video, maybe a series of videos outlining some of the kit that you can get, some of the software and a little bit of advice on getting them set up just to help get the ball rolling. So while he's enjoying his stick, I'm gonna try and run through off by heart the various stuff that you're gonna need to get going. Um, and in to cut into this video, I shall explain things in a little bit more detail. So, oh, he's off. So first thing you're gonna need, I think, as the Corial system is some sort of computer. So I'm gonna assume you know what a computer is, um, but just a few things to think about when you're sourcing one. Um, I would go for a processor that is um, i5 or above. That's the Intel i5. So i5, i7, etc., etc. et, cetera, et cetera. Um, You could get a Ryzen equivalent now. AMD do a chip called Ryzen, um, which seemed to be pretty decent. Apple have now come up with what's known as the M1 chip, which is their in, in their newest range of machines that they're just in the process of bringing out. Um, and they seem to be pretty decent for audio as well. But bear in mind that a few of the software companies are still catching up with supporting that chip. Uh, but I'm sure they'll get there pretty soon. Um, uh, I would say storage wise, go for SSD um, rather than a hard drive now. SSDs are nice and fast. They load your projects quickly and deal with the audio fast. Um, memory wise, again, minimum eight to 16 gigabytes. So yeah, really, that's the kind of thing you want to be thinking about. Of course, if you are going to go the Logic or GarageBand route, which I'll explain what they are in, in a little bit, you are going to need a Mac system because they only run on those. Next thing you're going to have to think about is uh, what's known as an interface. So what is an interface? Well, an interface is a device that allows you to get audio into your computer um, and then play it out again. Um, here's an example. <laughs> Here's a little Focusrite Scala interface. Um, so you'll see this has inputs in the front here for your microphones. These are actually combined mic and jack inputs, but they basically allow you to put microphones and things like that in the front um, so you can record audio into your computer. And then also they've got outputs on the back, um, depending on which model you get, but they've got outputs on the back which allow you to route it back to your monitoring system. Focusrite do a good range of starter interfaces. Also look at Behringer and Presonus. Now to get some sound into that interface, you're gonna need some kind of a sound source. So I'm really thinking microphones when it comes to sound sources. Here's a really good staple. This is the Shure SM57. It's a dynamic microphone. It's capable of pretty good sound pressure levels, which means that you could use it for a recording snare drum, um, you could put it in front of your guitar cab, but you could also use it for vocals as well. Uh, it's a really good all-rounder. I once uh, saw an interview with an Abbey Road engineer. He said you could use fancy mics on everything and it would sound great. And you could use SM57s on everything and it would still sound pretty darn good. So that's coming from an engineer from one of the greatest studios in the world. So an SM57 probably going to set you back about the 80, 90 pound mark now. Another good entry level studio microphone, the uh, Rode NT1A. This is a great mic for recording vocals and acoustic instruments and the like. It does require phantom power, which is a 48 volt power supply, which comes via your mic lead. Um, so we'll need XLR cables for this. So this, that's the three pin cables that you've probably seen plug into the bottom of the microphone like this. Okay, so that would mean that your interface would also require phantom power. Just so you know, just so keep an eye out for that when you're buying an interface. But the NT1A by Rode, a uh, fantastic microphone, and set you back about £150 mark. Comes in uh, various forms, you can get it in kits and that sort of stuff, so um, with various accessories. So that's the NT1A. Thought I'd mention this microphone here. This is the Audio Technica AT2020. Has what's known as a pop shield around it at the moment. Um, and yeah, this is a great little microphone. Comes in around the 80 pound mark. Um, highly recommend it. Really nice sounding microphone. And uh, yeah, good for vocals, guitars, and that sort of stuff. Used on Billie Eilish's first album. 
thought I'd mention this microphone here. Uh, this is a Shure PG48. This is the lowest budget microphone I'm going to show in this video. Um, you can get these now for about sort of 30, 40 quid. Very much resembles the SM58, which is a very famous Shure microphone, uh, which will come in around the £120 mark, I believe. But the PG48, if you're really on a low budget, I would recommend it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a pretty robust microphone and will certainly get you going. In order to hear back what you're doing, um, you're going to need some kind of monitoring system or headphones. When I say monitoring, I'm talking about speakers. Um, I've actually got quite an old monitoring system. These are um, Tannoy Reveal uh, speakers with an amplifier that I've got them running off here. Um, so that's what's known as a passive system. Okay, So it means that these speakers haven't got their own dedicated amps built in. There's a few systems out there which would be good to start off with. I recommend having a look at the sort of starter end of KRK monitors. Um, Presonus Eris are a nice little system. Uh, also have a look at M Audio and perhaps Behringer. Headphones. Um, I would say, you know, you don't need to go overboard on headphones um, un until or unless you're going to get really into sort of um, really high quality sort of engineering and mixing. But just generally, same with the speakers, really go for something that kind of doesn't color the sound too much. Funnily enough, I got these I mean, I've got various pairs of headphones, but I got these in a bargain bin in a computer shop a couple of years ago. Um, don't even really know what, what make they are, but they're surprisingly good for mixing. They've got, they've got quite a nice flat sound, so they don't really colour the sound too much, so you get a nice balanced mix. But as a rule of thumb, I would say if you're going to buy some, um, look at brands like um, AKG, Audio-Technica and Sennheiser, and you probably won't go too wrong. They've got a good, all of them have got a good range of headphones sort of starting at lower prices that you could sort of get into. Now, in order to edit and sequence all this thing you're going to need some kind of software this comes in the form of what's commonly known as a door or digital audio workstation so a door as i mentioned is a digital audio workstation it's a piece of software which uh, allows you to record in your your vocals or your guitar whatever you're doing it uh, allows you to sort of produce them and sequence it and uh, also will allow you to use software instruments so you might have a controller keyboard uh, which you can play your instruments in and generally arrange, produce and get your track sorted out. Various options available. First door I'm going to mention is GarageBand and that is a piece of software which basically comes free if you want it um, when you buy a Mac system. Great little bit of software, you can use external plugins and things like this, really good to sort of get you going and, and using uh, using a door for the first time um, and it is kind of a gateway into using Logic which is their more expensive um, fully featured door. Uh, so Logic, yeah, also uh, on the Mac systems only. Logic is a fully featured door and um, has lots of features to allow you to produce things very professionally, uh, fast becoming an industry standard. Has quite a, a lot of decent built-in plugins uh, for processing and instruments um, and generally worth looking at if you're getting a Mac system. Um, next up, I thought I would mention Cubase. Uh, Cubase you can get on any of the PC or Mac version of Cubase which I recommend to start off with is called Elements. It's around the £80 mark um, and has uh, a lot of really really good features to sort of get you going using their system. Um, another great little door is called Reaper. Um, fast becoming popular, um, Reaper is a very inexpensive door. For a personal use you can get it for around the £60 mark. Um, it doesn't come with a whole load of built-in uh, instruments and plugins, but there's quite a few free ones out there um, that you can source. I'll put some links in the description as well, but highly recommend Reaper. It's really coming on nicely and it is in fact what I'm recording this audio on. There are more doors out there and I recommend checking out all the options. PreSonus do one called Studio One and there's also a door called FL Studio, which is a very fine door as well. Something you might need, especially if you're com composing or writing beats, is some kind of controller mechanism, whether it be a keyboard or kind of pad system. Here's an example of a controller. Uh, this is a controller keyboard. This allows you to input MIDI information into your door. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Um, and it's basically putting information into your door in a similar way to your computer keyboard putting information into your computer. It doesn't have any sounds of its own, but allows you to input data, which you can then apply 
to um, you know MIDI instruments and um, plugins and that sort of stuff. Controllers come in various forms. They don't all have keyboards. Some of them are completely pad based, which is great for the sort of EDM type people. And there's various companies that make them. Plugins. I just remembered plugins. So a plugin is a little bit of software that runs within another one. Thus, thus plugin. It plugs into it, I suppose. There's various ones available. A lot of the doors come inbuilt with some plugins, uh, but you can get external ones. And these can be processor plugins, reverbs and effects, that sort of stuff, but also instruments. There's some great plugins out there. To get you going, I'd recommend Spitfire Audio Labs. There are a range of instrument plugins um, which are completely free. Also, if you go digging around the internet, there are loads of free plugins out there to sort of get you going uh, until you sort of really find your feet. There are various accessories that you're going to need, uh, particularly for the microphone and your and your system in general. So here's a few of them. So accessories, uh, these are little bits and bobs that you're going to need to set your system up. So what I mean is look at mic microphone stands. If you can go and have a look at them in a shop, um, just get something that's nice and sturdy. You don't have to go overboard on price. Uh, this, this, these start around the sort of 30, 40 pound mark, I would say, to get something kind of reasonably sturdy. Make sure you get good microphone leads and that sort of stuff. Um, this little device around the microphone here is what's known as a pop shield. This stops plosives, in other words, P's and B's, high pressure stuff coming out of your mouth, um, making a pop on your microphone. Uh, here's another example of that. You've probably seen that on, on videos. There we go. Um, you can also get things like um, shock mount. So a shock mount is something that you can put a microphone into. There you go, like that. And it's elastically sprung to absorb shocks. So all the, you know, vibrations and bumps that you might get from walking around the microphone, even if you might even bump into it at some point. But uh, microphone sits in there like that and you're able to sing into it and get a nice stable recording. Uh, of course, this one actually has a built-in pop shield as well, as you can see. So a nice little system, one of the kits that comes with the Rode NT1A. Hopefully that gets you started. Hope you enjoyed the video. I plan on doing some more detailed things about the individual things that I've mentioned, i.e. the individual pieces of software. So if you like what you see, please like the video, subscribe and do ding the bell so that you'll be notified when I post up a new video. Hope you enjoyed, thanks for staying on and I will see you in the next one. Bye.